Hello friends, Jerry Rosa here at the Rosa Stringworks Workshop. I wasn't planning on videotaping this particular repair on this particular instrument. However, I've run into something where I'm going to change the design of the instrument and therefore I thought it might be uh, worth uh, taping because I think somebody could benefit from it. <laughs> Okay, it's a uh, Epiphone uh, cheapy guitar. It is a cheapy. It says plywood guitar. It, when he brought it to me, there was no bridge on it, but the finish was still where the bridge should be, and the bridge had obviously pulled off. They didn't have the bridge. They bought it. I brought a new bridge with them, and it was an adjustable bridge. Well, I didn't want to put that back on there, and I talked them out of it. So I'm putting a permanent bridge back on here, and I've already got it intonated where it should be so I know it's in the right place and it's being glued. That's not what I want to talk about. What I want to talk about is this thing also has what I call a zero fret. Okay, in other words, here's fret number one, so obviously this must be fret zero. And uh, the nut goes here and what and basically the premise is you just have a nut with very deep slots and the uh, string falls down through the slot and rides on this first um, fret which is the zero fret and then it comes to the first fret and it sets your action for you it's supposed to be really simple and easy and all that but you know you don't really find it on high-end guitars you just find it on cheapy guitars well the problem with this particular guitar is for whatever reason this particular zero fret seems to be uh, smaller than the rest of the frets well that doesn't even make any sense at all it has to be at least the same size fret and if not even a hair bigger would be better so that you get clearance at your first fret. Well, because of that, this first fret is just about to buzz. I mean, it's right on the edge of buzzing when I put a string across here, and I did put strings across here for the intonation. Because I'd have to make a nut for it anyway, and because uh, this fret it would have to be replaced anyway, I'm just going to take the fret out, cut the fretboard off, put a regular nut on it here, and we're going to go with that. I've uh, never done this before, but, you know, in theory, it should work just fine. Now, there is going to be a negative, I, can, I know already. We're going to be cutting off quite a bit of the front of this fretboard here, and so that's going to leave a really wide nut, or I could put a standard nut on it and fill this front edge with a decorative trim, and that's probably what I'll do. So I don't really know for sure yet, but we're going we're gonna to get rid of this zero fret right now. I'm going to take the... Uh, fret nippers here. See if I can rock it out of its place. I didn't wet this down first. I'm just hoping we won't get a lot of tear out. No, no tear out at all. Okay, good. Well, at least that went in my favor. Now we're just going to saw it off right at the slot here. Um, you know, technically we might be just a hair that way on the intonation because the slot is a certain thickness and we're going to saw down through the slot and then that's going to move the fretboard right to the front edge. You know, technically, yeah, it might be, but we're talking a cheapy guitar and we're talking a, a quick and dirty fix. The guy doesn't want to spend a lot of money and I think this will be the quick way to do it, the f good way to do it, and only a dog's probably going to hear the difference anyway. So that's what we're doing. Uh, here's my actual fret file or fret saw for cutting fret slots so I'm just going to use it to go ahead and finish the cut take it down to what I think is the fret board I think we can get by with that I'm just pushing on it to see if it rocks off of there and it does um, not completely but it does rock up so I'm just going to take my chisel and work it under the end of this and we should be able to pop it right out of the way I think. It might not be completely sawed through on the treble side. Trying to be a little pain in the neck here but it wasn't quite sawed through on the treble side but that's all right it's not a big deal. Okay, and I'm just flattening off the front here to make sure there's nothing in the way to put a good straight nut on it there. Okay, so now all that stuff's out of the way with the exception of a little tab of wood over the truss rod there. 
And if we put a standard size nut on it, um, and I don't have one that's going to work, but I'm just here's some used ones just laying here. And uh, you can kind of see now it's going to leave a little mark on the front side here. What I'll probably do on this cheapy guitar uh, is probably, well, no, I'll have to fill it because otherwise you'll see the truss rod. So I'll fill it with a little piece of wood. It's not a big deal. Okay, we'll do that here in a second. Okay, I found a piece of deer antler nut that's kind of narrow uh, and it's pretty close to the right height. It's a little tall, but it'll work down uh, with no problem. So, and it's just about the right width exactly. If anything, it might be just the fraction of an inch hair, uh, just a hair narrow. But I think it's fine for this particular guitar, for this particular fix. Again, because we're on a very low budget, the guy wants to make it as cheap and fixed up as quick as possible. So that's what we're doing. And uh, that way it saves time of making a whole brand new nut. And we will glue the nut in place here. I'm just trying to make sure I get it as centered as possible. Cleaning off any little bit of a squeeze off there, just in the front there. And that looks fine. This glue sets up really fast. Now what I'll do is I'll measure this and come up with a little decorative border piece of wood to put right in front of it. Um, there is a little truss rod cover and what I'll do is I'll cut a truss, I'll, I'll cut something that will fit between the truss rod cover in here and just look kind of decorative. As you can see there, we just need to fill this space here in the front. Okay, so what I did was I just found a piece of mahogany and I measured this carefully uh, between the, the nut and where the uh, cover goes and I made a wood, piece of wood that fills that spot just perfectly and I even you know marked the ends and, and have cut it and I also even tapered the board slightly uh, so, I mean, I don't know if you can tell that on camera or not, but it's actually wider back here against the nut, and then it tapers thinner down against the trim piece, which is all easy to do. It only takes a second or two on with my sander. So that wasn't a lot of work at all. It was very easy. And now I'm just going to glue that in place, and I'm going to stain it dark, and we'll see what that looks like. Okay, you can see what we did here. We put that little filler piece in. I just went ahead and dyed it with some brown dye. Doesn't match perfectly, but it's plenty close enough for a cheap uh, repair and for a cheap guitar. And you know, we're doing it on a budget and uh, looks good. Uh, that gets rid of the zero fret problem. So now we can, it'll just note and fret just like a normal guitar. Uh, we can set the action in, uh, perfectly with the uh, nut that's there. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Yeah.